Ever since I lost it, I've been thinking about nothing but getting the title back. Becoming a two-division champion, you know? It's time's ticking, man, I, and I'm not getting any younger. And I have goals that I want to accomplish, and I need to go out there and do it. But what do I have to do to get this title shot? I have to scream and shout and say I'm the best fighter in the world? I'll do it, because I, I believe I'm the best fighter in the world. I'm the closest guy to become a two-division champion in this sport right now, not Conor McGregor. I've been in this rut for how long now, you know? I'm just like, it's the norm. It's the norm. Getting fucked is the norm for me. I'm just not going to let these people tear me down. I'm going to get it done. Whatever I got to do, I'm going to make it happen. So you guys that are cutting corners just a little here, you're young, okay? That's part of the game a little bit. You don't know hard work. You're starting to learn it. Your heart, your body hurts a little bit, all right? You got to know that that's part of wrestling. That little slight pain there means your greatness is in the works. Your body's doing what it needs to do, right, Jake? You feel that? You see me with the sweat on? All right? That's my body telling me, hey, man, we're having a good time here, boys. Let's get it on. You know what I'm saying? So what I'm telling you is don't worry about other people when wrestling. You worry about yourself. If you train to be great like this guy, right, does he worry about if everybody's at practice training hard with him? No. He comes here and whoops ass either way. Tony, Tony, Tony. Back up. Shot. We're at uh, Elite Wrestling, um, my club and, and my, my partner Steve Rivera and Vinny Delafoff's club. Yeah. Um, Steve my, was, was my first coach. Still my wrestling coach too. First wrestling coach. Yeah. So we've been together since the beginning. He was in seventh grade, and here in New Jersey, it's what we consider a late start. You could see that there was something special there to be had. Yeah, I'm here because oh, I'm an owner of this place, but more importantly, because my kids are here. You know, I, I get to be a dad um, and a coach. And, you know, wrestling is my life, and I just want to instill that in my kids. You're gonna squeeze, squeeze him, squeeze him. Oh, he's big. He's big, though. Wrestling is just going to teach things that other sports can't teach you, and especially at a young age. It teaches grit and toughness. It's kind of like life, you know? Life ain't easy, wrestling ain't easy, and it sets you up for that. Go. Ooh, watch banging heads. Break. You guys all right? You all right? Let's see. You guys got to bang heads. Now you bang that one hard. Come here, let me see. You want to sit out? You want to go one more? You want to go one more? You want to sit out? You want to sit out? All right, go sit out. Go sit out. All right, you bang your head. You can't run into heads. You all right? You all right? You look like you bang your head too. All right, hands in, man. Great job today, Jeff. Elite on two, one, two. Elite. Yo, good job today. Good job today, man. Good job today, man. Good job today, man. Good job today though. You're not, gonna, you're not gonna leave me hanging? Yeah. Hey, give me a good one. Don't be a little, give me a sissy one. I grew up uh, here in Tom's River. Um, my family is all from North Jersey. Uh, you know, I was born in North Jersey. We're in uh, Seaside Heights, right over the bridge from Tom's River. Jersey Shore is where I'm from, not the TV show so much. I've been wearing a gold chain since a little kid. You know, I think my first baby pictures, I was rocking a gold chain. Uh, you know, it's part it's being Jersey, part being Italian. My family's Italian. Uh, we lived up north in the same neighborhood. Houses right next to each other. But this, is, this is my first house. My grandmother lives right here. Any time of day, no matter what, I can go to my grandmother's and like I'm hungry, so make me some banging ass meal. You know, I'd be a young kid, and my parents still be in bed. I'd get up in the morning, I'd go to this neighbor's house, knock on the door, and like they don't have kids. I'm just playing with them. I'm like, hey, what's up, guys? And I go eat breakfast there. I go to that neighbor's house, go play with their dog, and then my parents would get up like, yo, what the fuck are you doing? You know, I'm like you hungry? I'm like, nah, I'm good. And I would get on my bike, and you know, the rule was to stay in the neighborhood, but they couldn't get me. I didn't have a cell phone, so they didn't know. I got in a lot of scraps, and literally. Five years old, I remember getting in my first street fight, by the way. And my father told me, he's like, you don't start fights. He's like, you're allowed to hit someone if someone hits you first, and you can fight back, or if someone says something about your mom. That, that was the two rules. So, I learned quick to make people hit me. <laughs> make people hit me first, and then I, then I get after them. I've been in some scraps up here. I've seen some good scraps up here. I was day drinking one day. I'm leaving with my uh, my fiance at the time. We're walking home, and some dude I can see just checking out my 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 girl, and whatever. I'm cool with that, you know. But then he's looking at me like trying to trying to test me, like you're gonna do something about it. And I was by myself, and he was with a bunch of dudes. But of course, I'm like, bro. I said, come on, let's take a walk. And I walked down to where I just was with all my boys. Now he sees that I got people too, and he's like, no, 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 no. And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then. We scrapped, kind of gave it to him a little bit, and cops come rolling up, and uh, actually one of the cops was a kid, a kid I wrestled with, and uh, he's like, hey, stay here, stay here, and I'm like, all right, boom, and I took off, and, and got out unscathed. Hopefully they can't get me. That was a long time ago. I think we, uh, we, uh, we're, we're past jurisdiction and time for that. <laughs> awesome. Pleasure, my friend. Yeah, nice to meet you, bro. Get that belt yeah, there. Yeah, thanks, brother. We'll do. 
Let's go for the championship, right? Oh man, good luck. Good luck, bro. Freaking awesome. You're awesome, bro. My buddy Mikey's folks, they own this diner for, I mean, forever. I don't know. I don't remember when they didn't own it. Especially after a night of maybe indulging a little bit and having some drinks, you want to come here and get some disco fries. French fries with American cheese and gravy all over it. Can't go wrong. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the next day it might, might go wrong, but at the time, it's, it's bang. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Well, I'm so happy for you. I hope you get the fight you want on the stand. Yes, so yes. Whatever so. it is, I hope you're happy. Thank you. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Yeah, God bless. Oh, God bless. Thank you, hon. That's Mikey's mother. You know, growing up in Tom's River is, uh, is to me, is a special place. It's a small community. It's just very family oriented. You know, I, I still hang out with the kids I grew up with. I don't know if I'll ever leave here. My wrestling career turned out good at Clarion. It was successful. It wasn't what I what I anticipated. You know, um, you know, whenever I do anything, I want to be the absolute best. You know, I wanted to be a national champ, and, and if not, at least an All American. And, I didn't achieve that. I was, I was close. I think a lot of it had to do with uh, maybe my uh, my mental game wasn't uh, up to par, I guess, uh, quite yet. You know, I definitely felt after college I was at a crossroad. Felt like a retired athlete. You know, like you feel football players talk about it. You know, when they come to the end of their career, they just don't know what to do. And I, I kind of felt like that at, at 22, 23 years old. You know, I got a degree, but I went to college to wrestle. You know, uh, I graduated on a Thursday and went to work on a Monday, which I kind of regret a little bit. I wish I took the summer to chill. And I didn't, because that's the type of person I am. But uh, I started working for my dad, and I actually started training right away, too. Was I found my, I found this local gym in the area, and that's when I started training in May. You fought like a couple weeks after walking in, right? Yeah, I, I think I fought three, maybe four weeks at most uh, uh, in an underground show in New York. It's like a smoker show at a boxing gym in, in the Bronx. It was nuts, man. I like dudes drinking 40s in there and stuff. Some guy, some one guy didn't show up. They picked a guy from the crowd. He was in fucking jean shorts. And I ended up being the main event. Fought a kid from New York, so he had he had the whole gym with him. He had you know the gym definitely screaming for my demise. And again, this kid actually was pretty good. Yeah, I think he's a coach at Alliance, believe it or not, in California now. You know, he was supposedly UFC bound type guy, and I was like, yeah, fuck it, I'll fight him. We did no weigh-in. There was no medical team there, or nothing like that, and we were doing one 15-minute round, and it was no rules. So I went in there, tried standing up with him, he hit me with a tie clinch and banging you know, two knees, two big knees to the face. And I was like, alright, I'm not going out like this. And I just went after him and then headbutt him and stuff. You know, went wild. I ended up TK on him probably like three minutes into the fight. I remember afterwards, we went, we went out to eat, me and my family, a couple of my buddies, and uh, you know, I literally looked like I didn't fight. I had a little bit of a bloody nose, and I went to the bathroom. My nose was bleeding, I blew my nose, and my whole face filled up with air. Because I, I, um, I broke my orbital bone, the sinus passage opened. So air, literally, my, my whole eye started swelling. It looked, you know, I had, I could feel the air in between my skin and my scalp, like crackling. And I'm a dummy, I'm sitting there trying to push it out my eyeball. <laughs> But uh, I went to the hospital and they say, hey, you broke your thing. And they said, don't worry, you know, the air will seep out on its own. And that was my first fight experience. About to scrap here, do a little wrestling practice. You know, we got just all, you know, local MMA fighters and, and some out of state guys, you know, uh, Marlon Marias, Edson Barboza, some, some of the bigger names. We're, we're the Jerseyans, they call it, all right? <laughs> so they moved to Tom's River, so now, now, now they're Jersey guys. So he's gonna pop me in the chest, sliver, sliver his arm out. As he comes out, as he comes out, he's gonna catch my hat and go into his, his underhook. Boom. Now we're moving a little, maybe we move. I'm gonna pop in the chest. My arm slivers out, my feet are moving. Clubbing down, his side's gonna open up. Now I work my underhook. Just moving him a little bit, we're still warming up. We got it? I got Anthony Ashnall from Rutgers University coming down to run practice, you know, put me through it. Scott Vecchio, also a Rutgers guy. So after that, getting that first win, did the bug get you? Did you say, this is what I'm going to do? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, I made, I made $160. <laughs> Cause I had 16 people there and you made $10 for every, every person that bought a ticket for you. So I made $160 and I go home with a broken face and my parents are like, okay, you done now? You know, and I'm like, hell no. At the time when I first fought, there wasn't even a 55 pound division in the UFC. So, uh, you know, I thought I was gonna have to fight in Japan or something if I really wanted to take it that, you know, to, to the next step. So I kind of was just doing it just for fun. You know, I was still working as a plumber. I was, you know, like working as a plumber and I was a wrestling coach. So I'd get up 
in the morning at like 5.30, work till about 2, 3 o'clock, go coach wrestling for a couple hours, and I go and, and, and train MMA, and that, you know, that definitely won you know, quite a bit, but uh, you know, that's what I wanted to do. I was, um, I was, I was bit by that bug. I fought Jim, um, Jim Miller. You know, I knew he was a stud. I think he was undefeated at the time. We went out there and we had a, a very good fight, very competitive fight. I was able to win, you know. Uh, I think I won a unanimous decision, but it was, you know, it was my first fight where I, I left with a black eye and he actually kicked a piece of my cauliflower off, off my ear. A couple weeks after the Jim Miller fight, they had tryouts for the Ultimate Fighter. And it was the season that uh, Nate Diaz won, 155 pound season. So uh, the first time they had 155 pounders on the Ultimate Fighter show. And I tried out for the season. I, and, uh, I made the grappling stage. I made the, the pad work stage. And you know, I was like, I'm in. I'm in. I know I'm in. I got it. I left Florida thinking I got, I'm, I'm going to be on the Ultimate Fighter. I'm calling my wife saying, I'm going to have to go away. And then I got in front of the producers. And you know, I'm not Mr. Personality, I guess, and, and flamboyant and whatnot. Or I guess not what I, they were looking for at the time. So I didn't get the call back. I was, I was devastated, you know? I mean, again, like, I, I felt like I always got so close, you know, like, in wrestling. It was either second in the States, second high school nationals, Miss All-American, and now here I am on the Ultimate Fighter thinking I got it because I, I passed the tryouts, and then I never get the call. It was like, damn, I just I can't get it out of this rut, man. I can't make it to the next step. So I was disappointed, but I was like, all right, you know, I'll just have to do it a different way. And, you know, I just went back to work and back to training, and I remember one night uh, just getting a call from my then-manager saying, Hey, they want you to fill in and fight this guy, Tyson Griffin. I feel like you always have to prove yourself when you fight, and especially being at my first time out. And I really feel like I was, Tyson was very highly regarded at the time. Uh, you know, he just beat, you know, some good, he beat, he beat Uriah Faber, he beat Dwayne Ludwig. I think I was really supposed to be just a, a, an opponent for Tyson. And I remember my manager was saying, listen, we got, we got you a fight. It's a tough fight, but they're guaranteeing you three fights, so don't worry about it. So he was almost saying, like, don't worry. If you lose, you're going to get another fight. But in my mind, I was like, I'm going there to win. I don't, I'm not going in to be second best to nobody. Crazy fight, crazy pace. And yeah, getting my hand raised in that first fight was, was awesome. I remember walking back to the locker room, and they were like, hey, Lorenzo wants to talk to you. And I'm like, Who's Lorenzo? I had no idea who he was. And I'm like, dude, you gotta tell him to wait. They're like, no, you get up and talk to him, you know? So I, he came in and said, hey, that was a great fight. I'm like, oh, thanks so much. You know, I didn't know that was the fucking owner of the UFC. <laughs> I, I did feel I was gonna start to evolve and really come into my own. I felt like the UFC wasn't make, making it easy for me either. When I did fight Tyson, they all said I was small. So when I won that fight, they wanted, they didn't want to give me another fight. They wanted me to go to WC and fight at 45. And I was like, I don't, I don't want to go to WC. I'm in the UFC. Why would I go? To me, that was a step backwards. I was like, I'm, I'm going to stay at 55. So I felt, not that they were setting me up for, for a loss, but I almost felt like they were. You know, I got caught in the knee bar against Tyson, and they're like, all right, this kid lacks jiu-jitsu. Let's give him Mark Bocek, one of the most highly decorated jiu-jitsu players. End up TKOing him from stand-up. So then they say, all right, this guy can stand up. Let's give him Spencer Fisher, who was, at the time, one of the best stand-up guys. I go out there, and I, and I take him down left and right and, and beat him up pretty good when he got a decision. And then they're saying, oh, you got to wrestle him? Let's give him Gray Maynard, who was, you know, one of the best wrestlers in the UFC at the time. You know, the first round, I think he won. Second, I threw him. I got on top. I said, okay, maybe I got that, you know? Third round, he took me down, and, 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 I, and, I, and he held me down pretty good. You know, he didn't land, land any punches or anything, but he controlled me. And I remember uh, getting up, and I think someone's like, one of my team, one of my corners, like, put your arms up. And I'm like, for what? You know what I mean? I was, I knew I lost. I was devastated that, that you know, being my first loss. I haven't lost anything in, in a while. You know, I was undefeated. And I think I was ranked top 10 or something at that point, you know, broke into the top 10 in, in, in the world. And, and then I go take this loss. Uh, the experience in wrestling and ups and downs in wrestling definitely got me ready for that situation because, you know, I was like, all right, I've been here before. You know, you've lost before and you were able to bounce back. Paul's doing three. And then you're doing um, three, Sal, and then two, Frankie. So nervous, Coach. So nervous. <laughs> Getting ready for that great fight, I, I realized I needed a team. I didn't have a team. I was training in that local place in town. And I'd be calling people up the night before saying, hey, do you want to train? And I'm like, dude, how can I be getting ready to fight, you know, in the UFC, the biggest organization in the world? And I don't even have my schedule set the night before. I knew uh, 
I needed to go home and reevaluate some things, and that's when I started training with uh, Ricardo Almeida and Team Hensel Gracie, and that's when me and Mark started really hooking up on a, on a more serious, serious level, and, and that's when things started changing. They hand me Hermes Franco, who just fought and lost for the title. So now I'm fighting a number one contender. You know, I, I thought they were going to cut me if, if I lost that fight, so there was a lot of pressure going into that one. I went in there and I was able to dominate. I won UNAF's decision, one fight of the night. It was, you know, a very exciting fight, and Hermes was super tough, so that, that, was, a, that was a big win for me. I feel like the escalation of my, of, of my opponents was perfect, I thought. I knew I was, I was close to that title shot. I knew a good performance was, was going to possibly put me in that picture. At that time, at 55, it was BJ's division. He was just running through everyone. I think he ran through Shirk, he ran through Stevenson, he ran through Florian, Diego Sanchez, and I mean, like, just obliterated all of them. So I was just a, just another filler just to get before BJ goes back up to 70 and fights for that title. I, I was definitely obsessed with this fight. Grueling camp, you know, we started 12 weeks out just to get ready for it. And that's when I, I think I just started signing on to Twitter and. BJ's got some, some passionate fans and they were coming at me like you're gonna get smashed you're gonna get killed and you know I didn't does that stuff doesn't bother me anyway but uh, I felt it you know I felt it uh, on a bigger magnitude just because I was fighting BJ I wasn't only fighting BJ Penn I was fighting the aura of BJ Penn you know and everything that came with it and um, just the magnitude was bigger <laughs> My first five round fight, it was kind of was just tunnel vision. And I knew nobody believed in me but the people that matter. You know, my coaches believed in me. And more importantly, I believed in myself and went out there and just got it done. Yeah, I was like on such a high because I mean, I just won the title, I just accomplished something. Call me the. the MMA version of Rocky, you know, and uh, going out there and just getting it done. It was, uh, it was a special moment, and you know, when everyone's giving this backlash saying I didn't win, it kind of took my thunder a little bit, you know, and that was, uh, that kind of sucks now that I look back, but in the moment, I mean, I had a smile ear to ear, and not to go to bother me. It was elation, you know, I mean, it couldn't, you couldn't write a story any better. I spar with him like a three times a week, and he looking bad and better, strong and faster. That's motivate me. We're just doing what we do best, and that's getting that cage and, and try to fuck people up as good as we can. The way Connor got his title, he got it by his mouth. It just sucks for someone that's been taught hard work gets it done, and that didn't get it done for me. I know Jose's been talking, saying he's gonna knock me out, and I believe I'm gonna be the one to knock his ass out.